first of all being water intake, right? Water intake is basically the, the next macronutrient and it's one that people just, you know, ignore because it's very easy to ignore. But if you don't consume enough water, you're in a bad position. I'll leave it at that, right? I think everyone understands the importance of hydration. You know, if you've ever been dehydrated or you've ever seen someone dehydrated, it's not great, right? Even if you have a mild dehydration, you're in a bad position, blood pressure wise, cognitive health wise, et cetera, right? So we wanna consume enough water. What is enough? Well, again, this is gonna be one of those things where it's actually hard to find particular numbers. I think it's two liters per day is a general recommendation for like population wide. But if you're an athlete or you exercise at all, it's actually surprisingly high. I think it's like four to five liters per day is the general recommendation. And I, I know a lot of people that go to the gym and they're like, yeah, I really care about my health. And they're getting maybe two liters of water per day, you know? And so if you are someone that's exercising, which we do generally recommend, we do advocate for higher water intakes. How high? Generally speaking, the starting point with water intake that we set is roughly 40 milligram or milliliters, I should say, per kilogram of body weight. So if you weigh 100 kilos, you're getting four liters of water per day. Stuff like coffee, tea, you know, juices, stuff like that. It does all contribute. I know a lot of people get, you know, into this mindset of like, oh, if I have coffee or something, it's going to be dehydrating, blah, blah, blah. It's just not the case. All the research uh, suggests that that's just not the case. Like, I don't know why that's still propagated. Like there is some research to suggest that it's potentially dehydrating, but in habituated uh, coffee drinkers and stuff like that, it's just not a case. And also it's literally like fucking 95, 97% water. Like how is that not hydrating? You're saying that like, it just completely cancels that out. If you have a hundred milligrams of fucking caffeine in that, obviously that's not the case. Right. Um, <clears throat> do you want to say on water intake, Gary? No, I mean, I drink a lot of water personally. My, I sweat quite a bit. I sweat a lot during the night. I sweat a lot during jujitsu. I don't sweat a lot when I lift weights at all. So there is some variance there in terms of how much water I need to drink on a given day. Like if I'm just training in the gym, I'm not going to be sweating that much, to be honest. You know, if I'm just lifting, if I'm doing lots of cardio or I'm doing jujitsu, I'll be sweating a ton. Then, you know, depending on, you know, where I'm sleeping, what I'm wearing when I go to bed, you know, if I'm having nightmares or not, that might all vary or that might all uh, change the amount of water I'm taking in on any given day. Also changes if, you know, am I sitting at the desk all day, not really sweating, you know, not moving, or am I in the hospital on my feet all day in stressful situations? All these things kind of modify um, the amount I require. So what I try to do is for the most part, allow my thirst to guide me but I only allow my thirst to guide me when I'm ensuring that my environment is going to allow my thirst to be reliable so if I don't have water here then I'm not going to have the tendency to go and get water just because I'm a little bit thirsty so that can be it can get a little bit messy so you need to give yourself the opportunity to drink water and then drink it as you feel thirsty. You need to remove the barriers. Exactly. There, if there's any barrier or friction, then those things don't, don't uh, tend to be as useful. And then if I'm at jujitsu for an hour or two and I'm rolling and I'm sweating loads and my gi is soaked or my no gi gear is soaked, I know that my thirst isn't necessarily going to compensate for that amount of fluid. And I noticed that all the time I could drink a liter, a liter and a half during the session, you know, drink another glass when I come home. And then it's an hour later and my head kind of feels a bit off and I go to the bathroom and it's still yellow. Um, and I know that I haven't compensated fully. So in those opportunities where I know I've lost a lot of fluid, I'll drink beyond my thirst um, to ensure that I'm replacing my fluids. But most of the time I'll allow thirst to guide me with the caveat that we don't want those barriers to be there. Because one of the things that happens a lot, actually, and this happens a lot in medical professionals, nurses, et cetera, um, when people are on the wards all day, let's say when I'm on placement, you could be you know, doing something for eight hours or busy for eight hours. And because you're between different wards or operating theaters or whatever, you don't have a water bottle with you. you know. So unless you're making the conscious effort to go and get water, it kind of just goes to the back of your mind. And it only comes to the end of the day, then you're like, God, I haven't urinated all day i haven't drank a glass of water in eight hours and you feel like crap and if you're going straight from work you know from your job whatever job it happens to be to um the gym then you're going to perform super poorly 
And that was very common during the pandemic, especially when people were wearing um, masks all the time or specific types of PPE that might restrict them from having water throughout the day. And then they're also sweating a lot more, especially if you're a nurse in a hospital wearing PPE and you're, it's already warm and stressful as it is. You could be super dehydrated going into a session and you wouldn't even realize it because the friction was there all day and you were just busy, you know, and that happens. Yeah, 100%. Um, I have, well, I have one question and I have something to add. How do you account for the nightmares? How do I account for the nightmares? Do you increase or you decrease water intake? Oh, decrease because I'll be sweating like a motherfucker. <laughs> so you increase your water intake then to account for that, yeah? Ah, uh, yes. Fantastic. Anyway, that was an aside. The other thing I want to say is, yeah, you can use your urine color for a, a kind of proxy measure. Well, it's, it's almost a direct measure of your hydration status. Generally speaking, we advocate for five clear urinations per day. That generally correlates with good hydration. Now, obviously, that's not always uh, a reliable indication of your hydration status. And it can be thrown off a little bit, especially if you take something like a multivitamin, you know, it's going to be like, well, was that a clear urination or did I just piss out a load of, you know, B vitamins here? Like, would it have been clear otherwise? Um, so that is something that we can use five clear urinations per day, generally advocated or uh, correlated with good hydration. And I don't just mean like, oh, I drank four liters of water in the last 20 minutes and I pissed five times. And as a result, you know, they were all clear. Like, I'm not talking about that. We're talking about spacing that out throughout the day. You know, do you have anything to add to that, Gary? No, I'd say I have about 15, but I don't think I'm a good reference. Yeah, well, you're, you're drinking more water. I'm saying like, this is the, the bare minimum here. We want to have at, yeah. least, at least five clear urinations. Like if you go to the toilet and every single day you go to the toilet, you're like, that, that's yellow like and you never see clear not even one two three times per day like you're probably dehydrated you probably need to consume more water right so we want to get again bare minimum five 